You're listening to episode 33 of A Whole New You podcast. Rebecca Wiseman joins us on today's show to discuss anxiety in women. We talk about how stress manifests physically in our bodies and the psychological implications that can result. Rebecca gives us some techniques to help quell our anxious thoughts and tips to help keep us grounded in the present moment. Welcome to A Whole New You podcast. I'm your co-host, Kim Maravich. I'm a registered nurse and author of the book, 360 Health. I'm joined by my dear friend, Lori Biddle, a health and wellness coach certified through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Our show exists to inspire and empower women to take charge of their health with weekly tips and conversation about self-care, mindset, nutrition, fitness, and clean living. Please keep in mind that the material provided in this podcast is intended as general information only and should not be used as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. We're thrilled to have you here. Let's get to the show. Before we get to the show, we'd like to give a shout out to our show partner, Perfect Supplements. Perfect Supplements is a family owned and operated business that supports local farms. Their superfoods and supplements contain no synthetic nutrients, no artificial colors or flavors, and no GMOs. Products range from collagen and bone broth powders to plant proteins, greens, and adaptogenic mushroom and herb capsules. Lately, I'm loving their Perfect Machinga, which is a combination of organic matcha and moringa. This product is an energy-boosting, nutritious green powder that's loaded with antioxidants, iron, calcium, vitamins, minerals, and all the essential amino acids. It tastes great in my morning smoothie. To check out their wide array of supplements, go to perfectsupplements.com forward slash Kim. And if you use coupon code Kim10 at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off your order. This is a great way to get superfood nutrition while helping to support our podcast. Without further ado, let's get to the show. Welcome back, everybody. We are excited today to be interviewing Rebecca Wiseman as part of our series on anxiety. Rebecca is an anxiety coach and the founder of Wise Body Wellness, where she holds hands with women looking to step out of anxiety and step into who they are. After spending almost a decade in the corporate world and getting diagnosed with Crohn's disease, Rebecca made it her mission to heal herself and others suffering from mental dis-ease. She uses anxiety not as a condition to fix, but rather as a tool to uncover hidden insecurities, self-doubt, and other imbalances preventing women from shining bright. She says, life is short, let's find joy. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. Um, Rebecca and I connected first on Instagram. Um, I was drawn to her account because of the name, um, The Anxiety Coach. That That is the handle of your Instagram. Is that correct? Yeah, it's um, Wise Body Wellness, but Anxiety Wise Coach Wellness. is the first thing that you kind of see. And it's, it's how a lot of people actually find me because anxiety is just such a hot topic right now. And I think we're all realizing as a culture and society that Anxiety absolutely can be this horrible, debilitating thing that, you know, requires medication, all these things. But at a basic level, we all experience anxiety every single day. Um, And I think we're all kind of waking up to that. So it's just sort of booming right now, I feel like, um, in awareness, which to me is wonderful because the more people that are aware that anxiety is something that happens in our day-to-day lives the more people will start to make changes and fix habits and start to learn more about themselves. So it's a really, really interesting time. I feel like that we're in right now, especially with kind of stress and anxiety. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure that's how I found you. I'm pretty (laughs) sure I was searching maybe anxiety hashtag. Um, Rebecca and I had um, an email conversation yesterday. And as our listeners know, Um, My family is moving to another state and um, Rebecca herself knows uh, how stressful moving can be because I believe you said you've moved four or five times um, in the past few years. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I've moved moved a lot. And I think anybody that that has moved, um, especially multiple times, just knows that 
no matter how much you prepare, no matter how you know hard you try at the beginning to kind of get everything lined up, there's just inherent stresses that come with the moving process. And yeah, it's a doozy. Right. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I am just I'm really excited to hear what you have uh, to say today because I told Rebecca um, when we were talking before we got on air that she just has such a calming presence about her. Um, I already feel more relaxed than I did going into the show, and I just can't wait to hear what you have to say uh, for our audience. I know you're going to be a blessing to us. So, uh, so thanks again for being here. Mm. And what. What I just thought was maybe we could start with you um, telling us a little bit more about yourself and your work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm just so excited to be here sharing about all of this just really, really lights me up. So yes, thank you again for having me. So sure. yeah, a little bit about me. So I live in Chicago now, but I was born and raised in Westchester, New York, and I was raised by two holistic parents. So Growing up in the 80s and 90s, it was not cool to be holistic as I feel like it is today. So, you know, we grew up drinking rice milk, eating tofu, you know, eating a lot of brown rice and kale and things like that. That was kind of the norm in our household. You know, we were not a household that had, you know, tons of sugary cereals and junk food and soda and all of that. So um, this world was really the world that I was raised in. And then, of course, you know, went off to college in my 20s, did kind of the normal, the normal thing. But my foundation has always been holistic healthcare um, and holistic wellness. Um, so, you know, I was not always an anxiety coach, mm -hmm. um, as you had kind of explained in my bio. Um, you know, I, I majored in college in journalism, mass communication, just because I love human behavior. I've always loved studying humans and kind of how we think, how we operate. That's always been really, really exciting for me. So I ended up going into the corporate world, um, as many people do when they leave college to kind of get that big job and, you know, follow the path that society tells us is, you know, going to lead to a life of joy and abundance. Um, so I worked for some really big global companies and, you know, I was happy enough, quote unquote, for mm -hmm. a while. Um, but as years continued of me being in corporate for, you know, almost a decade, I just got more stressed, more anxious, and further and further away from who I am. You know, when we're in the corporate world, we're told to dress a certain way, to behave a certain way. As women, we need to act a certain way, you know, sometimes need to put on makeup and look a certain way, um, which still kind of floors me a little bit. But, um, you know, I was leading this life that society told me would lead to happiness. I had a good job. I had a good salary. I had a man that I loved who loved me back. I had my own apartment, a cat. Yet in my mid-20s, I should have been like happier than ever, but I somehow was really, really miserably unhappy inside. And a huge, huge reason for that was because I was so stressed out and I did not have balance in my life. Um, no one really was teaching balance, um, you know, five, 10 years ago. That was not something that I feel like was very prevalent in our society as it is today, just because I feel like so many people have gotten burned out and are at a point where they need the balance now. Um, but yeah, I was just in a place where I was just really unhappy and I was kind of like, is this it? Like, is this really, is this really it? Like, this is, this is the life, the quote unquote life that, um, you know, I've been striving and working my butt for like for all these these years and all this time. Um, so I, you know, I could say that I've always been a bit of a nervous demeanor. Um, maybe it doesn't sound like it now. I've done a lot of work since then, right? Um, but, you know, I'm a recovered control freak, perfectionist. Um, I've been called type A, all the words, right? And so people that typically have some of those um, qualities or characteristics can sometimes tend to be leaning more towards like IBS and GI distress. Um, so I did suffer from IBS for years. Um, and then in 2017, I was diagnosed with a really, really bad case of Crohn's disease. I actually did take um, a two month medical leave from work um, and just really noticed that my body was so out of alignment and so was my spirit. So was my mind. It just was a really, really big wake up call for me that I really needed to make some massive shifts in my life. Um, so it just got really clear that I couldn't sustain myself any longer um, living this life that I kind of was saying, is this it? It was sort of like, no, this isn't it. And it can't be it because you can't live this way anymore. 
Um, so I ended up going back to school and studied holistic integrative nutrition with a major, major focus on healing myself. Um, and along the way, not only did I heal myself and get myself into remission from Crohn's disease, I'm actually reversed my Crohn's marker. I'm in the process of reversing my Crohn's marker, which I had no idea you could even do. But if there's any autoimmune people out there, just know you absolutely can. Um, and once I was able to kind of tackle my stress and anxiety, um, along with insecurity, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I was able to reach a state of joy that I just, I didn't even know was possible for me. And, you know, this is not to say that I was just some like sad, you know, mopey person. You know, I wasn't, I really wasn't. I was doing all the things that I thought, you know, would bring me joy and doing all the 20 something things. But deep down, I just was unable to reach this point of joy that I've been able to reach at this point in my life, just because my life had so much chronic stress and anxiety. And I was living so deeply in my mind and my thoughts on a day to day basis that I just was not present um, with my life, I was not able to experience gratitude. Um, I just was really not experiencing my life, um, if you will. So um, healing a lot of that and, you know, stopping spending my days going down anxiety spirals over my body, my boyfriend, what if thing, um, you know, scared or fearful of the future just absolutely changed my life. Um, so I started my business, Wise Body Wellness, at the beginning of 2018. And there were a lot of different paths that I thought I kind of could have gone down um, in terms of kind of my coaching business. But anxiety just, it is the thing that changed my life by removing stress and anxiety. Of course, I still have stressful moments. I still have anxious <laughs> moments, but it's no longer ruling my life. And it just, it absolutely changed my life. So while um, stress and anxiety is kind of the name, if you will, of my business, my work is really about empowering women, um, empowering women to take back their lives and live a life of authenticity and joy and freedom because the truth is, is anybody that's experienced really intense anxiety or stress knows these things steal those things from us. Anxiety and stress literally steals our freedom. It steals our joy because we get so trapped and stuck by our thoughts. So when we're able to create a little bit more space and open our eyes and be able to see the world from a different perspective outside of the perspective of our mind, we're truly able to reveal a new version of ourselves. So I just feel so blessed to be doing this work and um, to be able to watch my clients transform in front of me. It's just really, really been such a blessing in my life. Well, some of the things that you mentioned, I, you could have been describing me as well, <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca. Uh, some of the notes I just took on what you said, uh, because they resonated with me, nervous demeanor, yeah. uh, recovered control freak, <laughs> um, sometimes insecure, and wasn't uh, feeling very present in your life. I, I can resonate with all of those. And I really think that many of us women can yeah, <laughs> resonate absolutely. with that. Um, so what a gift you are giving people as, uh, you know, with your words and through your coaching. Um, so you kind of already answered the, the question I was going to ask you next, which was just what got you interested in, in the treatment of anxiety. I think your personal story, um, has helped you be that coach, be that blessing to other women to help them get their lives back on track. Like you said. So you mentioned when you were talking about Crohn's disease, which, um, you know, if anyone has had experience with it, I had a former boss that had Crohn's disease and had so many surgeries um, and it's very debilitating. It can be very debilitating. Yeah. So that is um, a pretty severe autoimmune condition. So um, one question I had, and it's amazing that you're able to reverse your markers. I mean, that's a testament to... Um, a, you know, a change in lifestyle, nutrition. But what I was going to ask you on the flip side, do you think that stress had any kind of role um, in the development of your illness? Now, giving the caveat that autoimmune conditions are pretty complicated, but mm -hmm. do you feel like stress um, played a role in, in your Crohn's disease? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's a book on my shelf here. Um, called When the Body Says No, um, which is a really, a really wonderful book. Um, but there's a ton of books that are written now about stress. Um, the Healing Self by Deepak Chopra is another one that's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I think most doctors now are acknowledging that stress is at the center of every major disease and chronic condition. Um, it's pretty impossible, I think, at this point to separate the two. Um, I'm sure many of the listeners today know people that have had, you know, from autoimmune diseases to cancers to other, you know, heart disease, other kinds of issues. And it's really, really challenging. I mean, there are outliers, but it's really, really challenging to actually find one of these people with these conditions that has no stress in their life or a low stress Mm -hmm. threshold in their life. Usually these people are chronically stressed. Um, And, you know, it's really interesting about my story. When I got sick, um, you know, all my coworkers and people in my life were like, you, how did you get sick? It was, and it was very, very challenging for me um, from kind of an ego perspective of being like, you know, I was already vegetarian. I already, you know, had completed my yoga teacher training and practiced yoga and did all the holistic things. I was not meditating, but um, doing a lot of the holistic things. However, the thing that I was not doing was I was not taking care of my mind. I was very aware of the fact that I was extremely chronically stressed and I just couldn't get a handle of it. And again, like I feel like the tools today, there are so many tools on stress and anxiety out there. Meditation is so common. You know, five years ago, even these things were not as common as they are today. Um, So I knew that stress was a huge issue for me. You know, my my boyfriend at the time, my parents at the time, people had, you know, warned me, if you will, you know, you're really stressed, you need to do something about that. Um, when I was 25, my mom and I actually even uh, went away for a meditation retreat, a weekend meditation retreat to try to get me to learn how to meditate. And I just, I couldn't get it to stick. Um, so yeah, stress absolutely was um, a huge component um, of my development of my my disease specifically, as well as anxiety. So with Crohn's disease specific, specifically, um, Crohn's disease is a digestive disease. It's an intestinal disease. Um, unfortunately, my disease was actually very severe. Um, so I kind of had a GI tract that was littered with ulcers. Um, oh. No fun. Um, no fun at all. But the mind and the gut are connected. And it's something that I think a lot of us don't realize. Um, This is part of why I named my business Wise Body Wellness. Um, You know, not body wellness or wise wellness, wise Mm -hmm. body wellness, because Mm -hmm. the body and the mind are one. You cannot separate the body from the mind. Um, You know, Deepak Chopra does share a lot about this. So do a lot of leaders in the holistic community. But I think anybody who's ever, you know, had a stomach in knots or a nervous stomach um, before an interview or, you know, butterflies before a first date is aware that the mind is connected to the body. Um, You know, there's a reason why we have those feelings because our mind is experiencing something and then our body experiences something as a result. The body reacts to the mind. So with IBD or GI issues um, in general, there's something called the vagus nerve that actually connects the mind to the GI tract and send signals from one to the other throughout the entire day. Um, So when we experience anxiety, we actually are sending nervous signals to our digestive tract. So if anybody has experienced um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or, you know, if it's progressed to something more severe like IBD, people usually know IBS is called like a nervous stomach. Um, And usually people experience um, IBS when they are nervous. So it's like, you know, you'll be sitting and chatting with somebody or you'll have a big presentation or something like that. And you'll, you'll get that urge to run to the bathroom to eliminate. Um, so it's very, very closely connected. And my case was no different. Um, you know, I wrote a blog post about this that could be found on my website, but my, um, Crohn's disease actually came out, um, after, a boyfriend of mine told me that he cheated on me. Um, I went through a lot of emotional trauma um, from that experience. And literally the next day, my Crohn's symptoms started. So there was no doubt in my mind that emotions led to my disease as well as my anxiety. So I kind of spent, this was 2017, I spent um, pretty much an entire summer living in anxiety of worrying, is he going to cheat on me? Like, is this relationship over? Am I going to be in my 30s and single? And, you know, all of those anxious thoughts that kind of fly around our heads. And whenever I would experience one of those anxious thoughts, I would bolt to the bathroom. 
there was no way to separate um, the anxiety and stress from my bowel movements. They were one and the same. So does stress um, relate um, to disease? In my opinion, absolutely does. Yeah. My mother has um, colitis Mm. and she has said the same thing. Hers is maintained now she's retired and, you know, her life is a a lot less stressful and she does take medication. But, um, when she was teaching, she said it, it was just, it's, it is stressful being, um, an elementary teacher at times, especially when you, (laughs) yeah, with all the kids and not being able to even go to the bathroom whenever you, um, needed to. And she just, she has commented before on just that high level of stress and what that did to her. Um, and I think that, I'm so glad that this be, this is becoming um, a more prevalent conversation because I think there are so many people in this like holistic health um, world whose primary focus is on nutrition. I think mm-hmm. a lot of us are working and getting our nutrition um, in control. And, and that's one thing, you know, as a control freak that you can control, yes. you know, you can, you, <laughs> and I'm sure you, you understand that too, but you, you know, you do have power over the things that you put in your body. Yeah. Um, but it's that outside world that, um, gives us stress and when we don't mm-hmm. know how to deal with it, when we don't have those, um, coping mechanisms or those tools in our back pocket to know how to deal with stress that then we can feel out of control because we can't control what other people are doing or what the world is doing around us. So we have to start to get some um, techniques. And I love what you said about that, um, making that connection to um, the mind and body and even like the whole nervous stomach thing. Mm -hmm. I think we all can resonate with that. And we all kind of understand, even if we don't have um, Crohn's disease or an autoimmune condition, we can all understand that. So that's living proof that, you know what, our, our thoughts completely do control um, our bodies and, and vice versa. We, we yeah. have to be making sure that our bodies are calm and centered um, so that we can then tackle everything that, we, that goes on in our day. So that being said, um, what are some techniques that you used in your personal journey to healing? Can you give us some specific things that you did to help get through that really rough time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but really fast, I, I did want to comment just on a couple of things that you just mentioned. Um, yeah. You know, part of my huge passion in working with women, I just personally feel just very connected with women. I think something really beautiful happens when women kind of get together in conversation. But you know, I just really envision a world where children are raised with awareness of stress and anxiety and their mind and how to stay balanced. And I feel like, you know, by teaching women, by teaching mothers, by people gaining more awareness, I'm just hoping that future generations of children will not have to suffer in the way that we have suffered. Um, And so that's just a new world that I'm kind of envisioning. But you know, what you said about nutrition, that nutrition kind of like a lot of people are out there doing the holistic nutrition. And, you know, a lot of people know about just kind of general recommendations when it comes to nutrition. And I feel like the mind is kind of next. And I feel like that's next Mm -hmm. up now. And I think that's the the big resurgence that's happening. Um, I do, however, think it's much easier, if you will, to talk about nutrition. I think the mind gets really challenging for people because we start to get into the gray areas of things that we maybe don't want to talk about and some insecurities and underlying things that can be really challenging. But yeah, I'm very, very excited about the mind kind of gaining that resurgence. But nutrition, as I'm going to mention in like a couple minutes here, is still a super, super important component. So in terms of kind of like my own personal techniques with my journey, I have to say meditation first and foremost. Um, All of my clients, um, I do guided meditations um, at the start of every single session with my clients, and I do promote a meditation practice with my clients, whether that be guided meditations, whether that be mantra-based, transcendental meditation is the practice I do, um, or it be mindfulness. There's a lot of different types of meditation out there, um, kundalini mantras, um, but finding a time in the day to learn to li- listen and become a witness to your thoughts. Um, we are all moving a mile a minute, especially the mamas out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not blessed to have children yet, but I have friends who, are, who have children and some of my clients have children. And 
holy cow, um, the amount of things that all the women that are moms need to do in a day-to-day basis, moving on warp speed, um, there's very, very little time to kind of sit and reflect um, and check in and be like, how am I today? I know how my kids are, like to, to every hair on their head, right? But how am I? What's going on with me? So finding that time in the day to kind of like really listen to what you're feeling Um Because again, often we numb out. Um, We get kind of scared to be honest with ourselves because we're scared of what might come up. Um, That maybe like I'm unhappy in my relationship. Maybe I'm unhappy with my body or I'm unhappy with my career or lack of career or finances are really tight. And we start to kind of uncover some of these deeper things that are kind of sitting below the surface affecting us. So when we're able to connect with ourselves deeper through meditation practice, through a quiet practice of listening we're able to kind of uncover what's going on below the surface. Um, so that that has helped me tremendously and not only getting to know myself better, um, connecting with myself and my passions more, but figuring out like what are really the things going on in my life and how can I work with those things to help me grow? So really that's kind of like the holistic method. So, um, you know, there's two, there's two schools out there. There's the Western and Eastern um, forms of treatment. The Western form of treatment is what we do today, right? In our society, you know, I experience anxiety. So I go to a psychologist, which who prescribes me um, medication to put a bandaid on it. Um, And no judgment or shame for that. When I was super deep in my anxiety days, I absolutely went to a psychologist and I got some meds. Um, Didn't make me feel great or align with me, but I did go that route. So I have no judgment um, for anybody that chooses that. Um, Mm -hmm. However, the holistic route would be instead of just, you know, taking medication and putting a Band-Aid on it, it would be figuring out why is the anxiety there? What is going on beneath the surface? What fears are coming up for you? What worries are beneath there that need to be looked at? So for me personally in healing my own anxiety, sitting with myself in meditation was such an amazing tool for me to figure out what was going on beneath the surface. And was it easy? Absolutely not. I think anybody that experiences anxiety, when you sit down to meditate, it's like so many thoughts are flying through your mind. It's almost completely overwhelming and a little terrifying at the same time. But take my word for it as somebody who used to experience debilitating anxiety, when you stick with it and you get past that, those days, those multiple days, maybe weeks of sitting there and just having so many thoughts fly around your head that you maybe can't even make sense of, eventually that settles and you're able to actually see below the surface and see what's going on and read your thoughts and be able to look at your life and your thoughts as a witness. Um, So that's been a hugely critical um, part of my journey. Um, Along with that, I would say kind of positive mindset and reframing. I do a lot of this work with my clients, actually some of my favorite work to do with my clients um, because I think a lot of us don't even realize Um, We don't even realize the thoughts that we're saying to ourselves and experiencing on a day-to-day basis. We kind of, we kind of live under the assumption that our thoughts are us and that's just who we are. The thoughts in our mind are who we are. And really when we, when we begin meditating, we realize that there's another voice there. Um, You know, sometimes we have conversations with ourselves in our heads and this is not, you know, schizophrenia. This is, this is truly, there are two voices sometimes in our heads um, and sometimes one of them is the anxiety and the other is the soul or it's something something else within us. Um, so where positive mindset and reframing comes in is one voice may um, may come to mind and say, oh, my gosh, I can't go to that party. You know, I really don't like the way my body looks or I really don't like that woman or that couple that's going to be there. And oh, I'm going to have to talk to them all night about their kid and this and that, right? We make up, we make up these stories in our mind. We're like, oh, I just don't want to go to this birthday party. And, you know, I don't really vibe with that family, but like, I don't know, I guess, I guess my kid likes them, but I don't know, maybe not. It would be rude if I went, we have these stories that we tell ourselves, these dialogues that we have in our mind. And, you know, sometimes they're innocent and other times they can be really mean. Um, and other times they can be really anxious. So I realized in my own life, the more that I meditated, the more I was able to notice the thoughts that were happening in my mind and slow them down to be like, eh, hang on a second. 
you're experiencing tremendous anxiety right now about like going to this <laughs> thing and this family and who you're going to talk to and how, you know, the kids are going to be when you get there and all of this stuff. Is this something that you even really want to do? Or if you do know that you're going to go anyway, you already said you're going to go. Why am I creating a narrative about it and spending all this mental energy right now thinking about what it may or may not be instead of being here in this room that I am right now? So really mm -hmm. focusing on kind of taking ourselves out of that anxiety and into the present moment and kind of reframing some of our language as well. I do a lot of reframing around um, negative mindset, really around a lot of body insecurity or relationship stuff, um, really stopping ourselves in the moment and being able to kind of shift what we say um, and making it more positive. Um, so that was a huge, huge part of my journey, catching that negative self-talk, um, catching those moments, and then just shifting them and moving forward with ease and grace without judgment, without self-criticism, because anything I know is as women, we love to do that. <laughs> we love to catch yeah. ourselves, right? We love to catch ourselves in the moment. And then we're like, oh my gosh, you were just down an anxiety or spiral for 20 minutes. I can't believe you wasted all that time being anxious. You were better than that. You knew more than that. You like, why are you still doing that? Like, and we, we just start to criticize ourselves and that just gets really ugly, really fast. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't serve us. So making sure that we're not doing any of that as best as we possibly can. Um, you know, I kind of am going in thematic order, um, if you will, kind of with these. Um, but as we kind of, you know, meditate, we become more of the witness. Um, we start to reframe our mind, bring in more positive mindset instead of negative self-talk. We start to bring in more self-love and self-acceptance. Um, so that was kind of like another technique um, that I used, if you will. Um, the self-love journey, I truly believe is a lifelong journey. Not that, oh my gosh, I told one of my clients this and she was like, you mean I have to do work on self-love for the rest of my life? <laughs> like I'm working so hard at it. It's so much work. And it, right. But not in that sense of like self-love being like this work I have to do forever. But I truly feel that like our life journey is a journey coming back to love and coming back to ourselves and coming back to accepting ourselves as who we are. Um, and as we kind of start to peel back some of these layers of stress, anxiety, insecurity, fears, we do start to reveal who we truly are. And some of that self-love kind of comes right back in. Um, food, huge, mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. I think we all know how huge food is. Um, you know, in school, they had taught us something that I think has always stuck with me. Um, and it's that the food that we eat literally creates our existence. Mm. The food we eat builds the blood in our body. It's not just, oh, I'm eating this because it's tasty or it's, it's satisfying an emotional craving or need of mine. Food is medicine. The food mm -hmm. that we eat literally builds the cells in our body. It creates the blood that travels throughout our entire body. So saying nutrition is important, I feel like is almost an understatement. It's, it's critically important for our health and happiness. And the cleaner our bodies are, the cleaner our mind is. It's sort of a chicken or the egg situation. You know, I feel a lot of people will either go gung-ho on the mind and really work on balancing the mind and the brain chemistry and the stress and the anxiety. And, you know, then they'll be like, oh, now that my brain feels so good, I want to eat healthy. And then other people mm -hmm. will start with kind of like the health and wellness stuff. And then as their body is starting to feel cleaner, they notice that they have less stress and anxiety. So I feel that both of them kind of have to work together. Um, so Getting my food under control was um, really important for me. And I already was eating really, really healthy, but there were certain tweaks that I definitely needed to make. Um, and again, this is specific to me. Um, I very much believe there is no one, one diet that fits all. I really, really believe that truly with all of my heart. Um, we all have different genetics. Um, we have different body types. We have different ancestral line lineage. It's sort of strange for me to envision that Somebody that, um, you know, came from Eastern Europe should eat the same way as someone that came from South America um, or Africa or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, so, you know, making sure that any food triggers, um, I had a lot of food triggers for my Crohn's disease, you know, like gluten, dairy, mm -hmm. um, meat, cane sugar is a really huge sensitivity of mine that I didn't realize um, at first. 
So coffee, alcohol, um, you know, removing some of these things really, really changed my life um, for the better. And then I would say just the last technique um, for my own personal journey has been essential oils. Essential oils, Mm -hmm. hands down, have changed my life. Um, I never thought that they were going to change my life, if I'm totally honest. When I got started with them, um, I used doTERRA. I'm also a wellness advocate for them now just because they changed my life and absolutely played a huge part of my healing journey, um, both with my physical body as well as with my mind. Um, And so now I teach and educate women um, on how to heal themselves and thrive with essential oils. Um, All of my clients use them. They've been a huge, huge part of my practice. Um, especially emotionally, um, that was a big surprise for me was how much they can help us, um, emotionally. So that was kind of the last piece I would say, I'm sure there's a ton more, but those were kind of the main ones, um, techniques that have helped me on my personal journey. That's really helpful. And you've, you've run the whole gamut of things. And I think that you're a testament to the fact that it's not a quick fix, you know, that we, we really need to dedicate time to ourselves, but we also deserve to have that time um, absolutely dedicated to ourselves. Because what I'm finding, you know, as a mom is just that I do not serve my kids or my husband or my family well when I am supremely stressed and at my wit's end. You know, I don't show up in this world as the kind of person that I want to be when I'm stressed. So it really, even though it's, it's hard for us moms to find time for ourselves, um, we do need to find it. Now, you know, I'll be realistic and say, there's no way I have like an hour to myself ever, unless I have a babysitter, (laughs) you know, there's just no, given the age of my children, I mean, I am lucky to have like 10 or 15 minutes, but I think Rebecca, wouldn't you say that just like even finding like 10, 15 minutes to meditate or to spend some time is at least a step in the right direction, even though, you know, we may not be spending as much time as you would recommend for meditation, but every little bit counts. Would you, would you agree with that? A hundred percent, hugely, even five minutes, you Mm -hmm. know, um, I had a client who had three kids, um, under the age of seven Mm. and, um, She was a full stay at home mom, um, but her, um, her husband worked a ton and really was not available to help support. And they did not have the means to um, hire babysitters. So she could Mm -hmm. go get time away from herself. So she was just mom 24 seven. um, And just creating five minutes for herself in the morning. I mean, it sounds silly, right? Just five minutes, five minutes for herself in the morning, or maybe it was 10 Mm -hmm to make a cup of tea, sit at her table and just close her eyes and just be in silence mm-hmm. before the chaos happened, she said changed her day dramatically. Just being able to start her day just with five minutes mm-hmm. of silence um, changed drastically how her yeah. day is. And you know, the other thing that I just want to mention for moms too is that some of these things you can do with your kids, um, you yeah. know, like- yeah. Depending on the ages, um, you know, children yoga is definitely becoming a thing. Um, So Mm -hmm. yoga can definitely be done with children. There is like meditation practices where they do like animal sounds and things like that, where, you know, you can sit with your kids even and do things like that. Self-care. One of my clients loves to do face masks with her kids Mm -hmm. um, and they make it like really fun and they sit and do face masks together and they create like a spa day. So it's sort of like, you know, how you might do like a tea party. It's like, it's spa time and she makes it really fun and they love it. The girls and the boys, they truly both love it because it's like you put on funny, you're wearing a face mask. It's silly. It's funny, but it's like the mom still gets to enjoy that kind of like quiet benefit as well. They put on some like relaxing music and you'd be surprised. Like, it seems like kids actually enjoy these things more than we'd think because kids too are getting more and more stressed, I think, yes. as our society gets more stressed also. So yes. um, just keep in mind that the children also might enjoy partaking in some of these things too. I really love that. Um, and I, I really am going to try these too. Now, I have two boys um, mm-hmm. and they couldn't be more different. My my oldest <laughs> is, you know, pretty quiet. Um kind of more like an academic, you know, he's only five, but (laughs) he's reading and he likes to, um, you know, do things on his iPad and very consult, can entertain himself. My youngest is very strong willed, very energetic. Um, 
I do believe in talking with um, a therapist that we have gone to see as a family um, that he does have some anxiety, even mm -hmm. that's exhibiting in its own way as a four year old. Um, yeah. And it's a bit, it has made me even more vigilant of my own anxiety and trying mm -hmm. to be careful in the way that I talk around them. I am not perfect by any means. And I definitely will exhibit some anxiety, especially now that we're <laughs> in the process of moving and things. But it's making me more aware of how my actions um, manifest and how what he is internalizing because kids are like sponges. So I yeah. really like these ideas that you've given me. And I think he would really enjoy all of those things. I didn't know there, there was a meditation with animal sounds. And um, yeah. I, yeah, and I think just doing like yoga, he actually does like to exercise beside me when I do like some DVDs or, or whatever yeah. we have. So I, I love that because I think that um, I think incorporating my kids in that journey would be super useful. So yeah. I really love that. And I also think that kids are very picky eaters, but what you said about having a clean, uh, clean eating translates to a clean body translates to a clean mind. I think, you know, I'm very aware of that in myself, but, but trying to do that with my kids, it can be tricky. Um, but I think that's something that I even want to focus on more. So now you've given me some, a lot to think about on that one. Yeah. So you know, those. Yeah. And, you know, um, there's a lot of studies that show um, kids and sugar um, and kids and gluten. So those might be yeah. some things that you might want to look into. Um, one of my cousin's um, children has has a lot of um, has a lot of those qualities um, mm -hmm. and diet can absolutely play a part. But the thing with the kids and the picky eating, because, you know, 100 percent kids can definitely be picky, but mm -hmm. especially if you're giving them all the yumminess and then you're like, right. eat these vegetables, it, it can definitely be hard. But I think also um, you mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head, like kids model their parents. And mm -hmm. if the parents are eating healthy food and are enjoying the healthy food and are like, mmm, this is so good. I love this food. The kids are going to learn those habits too. And it's like, yeah. we don't even really think that, but it, it's absolutely true. Um, so making these things fun and enjoyable for the whole family, I think also makes a really big difference. And like, I really don't think like four or five year olds are even too young to be starting to talk to about stress and anxiety. Like, I think that they get more than we realize. Yes. Um, my yeah. earliest memory of experiencing anxiety, I think I was like six years old or seven years old. And it was, it was related to school and, you know, getting dressed for school in the morning and like fear that like girls were not going to like what I was wearing. And it's just amazing how young it happens. And I never told my mom that she didn't know, right. um, you know, they kind of keep a lot of these things to themselves that they don't want to share because they already experience shame. They already realize that these things are, are not desirable. So when we can talk about them with their kids and say that, you know, mommy's experiencing some anxiety, well, what's anxiety? Mommy's worrying a lot. And, you know, it really, it really helps mommy if um, we can sit and do this exercise together. It's going to be really fun. We're going to sit on the ground. We're going to close our eyes and listen to this really calming music and relax together. And it's going to be really fun versus I think what a lot of, you know, parents do. And again, this is no judgment. I think when I'm a mom, I will probably feel <laughs> very differently, but it's like, I need quiet. Things are so crazy right now. And, you know, I'm going to go sit and meditate, which sort of almost makes it feel like maybe punishment um, and not kind of this fun, enjoyable thing that can be done together. So yeah. I think also the more children see their parents um, meditating, relaxing, doing yoga, um, these, you know, healthier behaviors, mm -hmm. I think the more that it rubs off on them. And, you know, you also like, we're spot on with, um, you know, it's starting with you and, you know, how good of anybody can we be when we're super stressed? Like, you know, not just moms, but wives, friends, um, you know, how good can we be to ourselves? Like really our cups need to be full so that we can shower everybody else in our lives with love, including our children. Um, so making sure that, and you deserve it. Like, I love that you said that because we all deserve it. Like nobody deserves it more than you do, more than we do for giving to ourselves and making us feel in alignment, creating more balance in our lives, creating more space in the schedule, more time to enjoy our lives and not have kind of those schedules like packed to the rim with things. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. So we talked about, you know, moms and that being, um, just 
you know, in general, that's a stressor, just having to take care of your kids. Mm -hmm. Um, But what do you think are some other major stressors on women besides motherhood in in today? I think perfectionism is a huge one. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the desire to be perfect, whether that be in appearance, whether that be as a wife or in in relationship, whether that be, um, you know, with body, with mind, in career, um, you know, Mm -hmm. that desire to kind of be a certain way. Um, And again, that kind of perfectionist viewpoint, I think, stems from cultural. It's not really in our nature. It's what society has told us. You know, we grew up watching celebrities, you know, reading magazines, seeing TV shows and models on TV of, you know, women looking a certain way, acting a certain way, being a certain way. But I think so many of us have grown up with these kind of perfectionist tendencies of, of, I need to be just so. And I think this kind of goes back with that kind of control freak or recovering control freak way also. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of women kind of struggle with this perfectionism, um, which creates a lot of stress. You know, when we're trying Mm -hmm. so hard to be perfect, it creates a lot of stress um, and way less fun. Um, And I think, again, our bodies, huge stressor for women. It kind of goes with the perfectionism. But you know, our body image, body shaming, food shaming, um, self-judgment, self-comparison, these things create so much stress. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just something I'm like feeling myself get very passionate. Yeah. But this is something I feel so passionately about because like I said, my work is really about empowering women. And we beat ourselves down all the time. We beat other women down all the time, not even to their face. We judge people just looking at them all the time. And really, we are judging ourselves. And I'm just, I'm so over these days of us picking on ourselves. Like we need to each raise ourselves up and tell ourselves we are the amazing women that we are. Because I truly believe every single woman is amazing. Every man is amazing. We are all amazing people. But we've spent so long beating ourselves down that we kind of forget how magically amazing we truly are. So we get so stressed out instead about our body, how it looks, about, you know, judging ourselves and all these things. And it just adds so much stress to our lives that truly is unnecessary. Um, And it's, you know, it's hard because it's like we do it, right? So we're the only ones that can kind of fix it. But it's like, unfortunately, something we're doing to ourselves as a culture Um, And I feel like, you know, it's time that we kind of end that cycle. So how do we kind of end that cycle? We end that cycle by really looking within and kind of getting to the root of where some of those patterns began and kind of healing some, you know, childhood trauma and healing some, you know, healing some memories and stories that we've kind of played in our minds and just bringing some of the magic and sparkle back into our lives, reminding ourselves who we are. Um, And then the last thing that I think is a major stressor for women today is relationships. Mm-hmm. Again, I think the first relationship that is a stressor is the relationship with ourselves. Um, I think that we all as women need to get really honest. We need to get really honest with our relationship with ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, how we look at ourselves, the things we say about and to ourselves. Um, you know, I think partnership, um, marriage, boyfriends, et cetera, mm-hmm. relationships with friends, are a huge, huge stressor. Um, I just, I see this so much with my clients. Um, you know, this is still kind of like programming that I think has, you know, come from the fifties and, you know, before, um, you know, the feminine movement and all of that is just that a a lot of women put a lot of stress on themselves to be the perfect wife or the good wife or, girlfriend or best friend, or, you know, we put so much pressure and stress on ourselves to, you know, show up in a certain way. Um, We also take on a lot of stress in relationships for any empaths and people pleasers out there. um, I am of both. Mm -hmm. Um, Oftentimes we take on a lot of stress from our partners. You know, I used to take on a lot of stress from my ex, you know, when he was stressed about work, I suddenly was stressed about his work. Um, And, you know, there's a way to be compassionate and loving and, um, you know, empathic for our friends and our partners about what's going on in their lives without taking it on and making it ours. And I think, again, that's something a lot of women just naturally do. I think it just is inherently part of us just from, Mm -hmm. you know, our desire to be mothers um, is to mother people around us. But I think we we take on a lot of stress from other people that we're in relationships with um, as well. And I just want people to know also that like permission to not, 
Like you have permission to not, it's hard. It's hard not to take on stress from other people, but you have permission to also not, um, you know, we each have, I think enough stress within our own lives without taking on the stress of other people. Absolutely. I think you nailed it. Um, I think we do that as women, we do take, and maybe people in general, but we do yeah. take on other stress. Um, I, I think you and I have a lot in common. I feel like <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I have that um, that empath uh, mentality a lot of times too. And mm-hmm. that, I think that just adds to the anxiety. And I think anybody can kind of understand that, you know, if you're in a room with someone who is really, really negative or uh, right. stressed out that it's, it's hard not to like internalize that and, and have your body feel tense all of a sudden. Um, so to just try to separate ourselves um, in that way is really important. And one thing I want to touch on before I ask you the next question, um, I, I feel like it was a serendipity. wasn't just coincidence that I uh, decided to reach out to you about being on the podcast. It was like the day that you decided to <laughs> Uh, go off of Instagram for the summer. Yeah. I believe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I just, I really feel like that was meant to be. But one thing I want to say about it, um, and I have mentioned this on the show before, that Instagram can be such a great place for me and for mm-hmm. others to connect and to find relationships, to find camaraderie. Um, however, it is a place where there's a lot of comparison. And I will say that many times, after being on Instagram, it's all the shoulds. And I think it's, it's yep. not just like, I'm just looking there and like scrolling. It, it could be, I'm internalizing things like, um, my feed doesn't look as great as somebody else's. Mm-hmm. I don't look as good as somebody else, but, and not only that, but just, I think anybody who's like kind of in an entrepreneurial role these days, they're all these shoulds. Like you should Definitely. be doing this. You should be posting this many times a day. You should be in your stories. You should do this and this and this. And, oh my goodness, you didn't get very good engagement on that post. What did you do wrong? Right. And I, what was wrong about it? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I come away from it thinking, that didn't feed my soul at all. You know, I started out just trying to do something good and now suddenly I'm feeling bad. (laughs) Yes. Yes, exactly. So I think, um, it's important to like, kind of take a break and to check ourselves in that way, because that comparison, it it can be the death of us. Um, and you know, and we just, we, we don't need that in our world. I think social media is a blessing it's also a curse. And we have to be really aware of that because it's not going anywhere. It's always going to be around, you know, Mm -hmm. we're in the age of technology and smartphones, um, and internet. And, uh, you know, while we can use it to our advantage, we have to be very mindful, um, that it doesn't overwhelm our thoughts and overwhelm us and make us sick, you know, and because stress does make us sick. So lastly, my last question for you is just how can we stay present and grounded? Um, it's That's kind of a hard thing. I think sometimes, I, at least my mind is always going towards um, the future and the what ifs and mm-hmm. what, what's it going to look like tomorrow. So do you have any suggestions for us on how to just stay right now in the present time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, this is a lot of the the upfront work that I do with a lot of my clients, because sure, like meditation, all these things are wonderful. But if you're not even able to kind of stay present or keep your Mm -hmm. head above water, then those things really can't be so helpful. Um, So the first one, it sort of seems intuitive, but I always kind of need to say it, um, is when we're experiencing anxiety, and we're kind of like, what if thing into the future? What's going on really is that we don't have faith that things are going to be okay. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, really at the root of that is like, we are scared and fearful that things will not work out for us and that, you know, things are going to go wrong um, and we're not believing and trusting. And that's kind of why we're what ifing into the future. So having faith. um, And again, this is like religion aside completely, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. just having faith, um, because belief makes our reality. Um, you know, we can either believe that the world's out to get us and like, you know, I'm going to move and, you know, I'm not going to have any friends and I'm going to hate where I live and everything's going to be wrong. And, you know, (laughs) we can go down those spirals. You know, what if my kids don't like the school? What if I don't like the neighborhood? What if, you know, there's so, there's an unlimited amount of what ifs that we could do, um, about our future, but, 
we can also choose to believe that life is happening for us and that, you know, I'm going to move and everything's going to work out divinely because this is what is meant to be because this is what is happening. And there's actually going to be some beautiful outcome as a result of this move and transition in my life. And although it seems really, you know, challenging and difficult and sad and scary right now, um, I'm choosing to believe that it's actually completely going to be for the best and it's going to end up being wonderful. So Mm -hmm. I think the first one, um, with the being present is having faith, um, that everything will work out. Um, it's really, really a hard one. Um, it was very hard for me, truthfully. It was actually very, very hard for me, um, to kind of get to that place because when I was so stuck in kind of my anxiety mind, I was like, have faith. What do you mean have faith? Like, how can I possibly have faith? Like there's all these scenarios that may or may not happen. And like, of course, speaking a mile a minute, right. (laughs) But, um, really, truly being able to just, um, you know, interrupt, interrupt those anxious thoughts, come back to the present moment and just reminding ourselves in the present moment that everything is fine right now and that all of these thoughts are projections into the future and they may or may not happen. We don't even know. It's like we have no idea if these thoughts will or will not um, come to fruition. So bringing ourselves back to the present moment of saying like, everything is fine right now and I have faith that everything will be fine. Um, I think that's just kind of a level set that I always like to start with. Um, But in terms of kind of like the actual, how do I get out of that spiral and get into the present moment? Because I think that's a lot of what my clients come to me for. They're like, all right, let's say I'm in this anxiety spiral and I'm like really down in it. How do I get out of it? And then come back into the present. There's a lot of different tools um, that can be used, but my favorites um, that I use with my clients, um, the first one getting into the physical body. So when we're experiencing a lot of anxiety, as I'm sure you've, you've realized, um, we're so far in the mind that sometimes like, it's like, pinch me. Am I even here? <laughs> like, am I even yeah. in this body? Cause we're so caught up in our mind. We might be like gazing off into a distance and so deep in some spiral that we kind of like someone calls our name or something. We're like, yeah. Um, we kind of forget, <laughs> right. We kind of like forget yeah. cause we're so in it that we kind of forget we're here. So, um, Tapping is becoming extremely popular, um, which is a wonderful technique, but I even go simpler. I love to shake my hands. Like I shake Mm -hmm. my hands really, really hard, like side to side, shake them up and down. And that just brings me back into my body. So like if you have a moment of realization of, oh my gosh, I've just been what a thing or I am what a thing right now, shake your hand, um, jump up and down if you need to jump up and down. Just remind yourself that you're in this physical body and you're here right now in this moment in the body. So I really love that one. A lot of my clients have really enjoyed that too, just kind of getting out of the mind and getting back into the physical. This is, I think, why exercise helps a lot of people that experience anxiety. But I think, you know, we don't all need to exercise all the time. Sometimes it's just a reminder that our physical body's there. Um, essential oils are again, a huge way that we can interrupt anxiety. Um, I've had the most success truthfully with my clients, um, using essential oils, um, citrus oils are known to be mood, mood enhancing specifically. Um, so literally keeping an essential oil near you and just whenever you're experiencing anxiety, just smelling it. When you think about essential oils, um, think about smelling a rose, right? Somebody gives you roses and you stick your, your nose into this beautiful bouquet of roses. And for a moment, all you do is smell the rose. And it's very hard to think about something else when you're smelling the rose, even if it's only for a couple seconds. So essential oils work the same way. They bring you into the present moment because for even a couple seconds, all your brain is thinking about is the smell of what you're taking in. So that is an amazing tool to bring yourself into the present moment. Um, another one I really like, and this is a good one for, um, moms as well, and can be done with children, um, is the I spy game. Mm -hmm. So I used to play this game all the time. I don't know if people still play this or not with, you know, all the Mm -hmm. technology things, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, reminding yourself, and again, you could do this with your kids. If you're sitting in the car and you're really running some like anxiety stuff going on, you can start with your kids and just be like, I spy a white truck. And then your kid will say like, I spy a tree. I spy this. I spy that. 
or you could do it by yourself. And the idea being you are surrounding yourself with things in the present moment. You are opening your eyes and looking at the world around you and noticing what's around you. Because when we're in those spirals, again, we do not feel like we're in the present moment and we don't even like kind of recognize the world we're in. We kind of are moving on autopilot, driving on autopilot, walking on autopilot, doing chores on autopilot, but we kind of forget where we are. So like even in the house, you could in your mind be like, I see that bouquet of roses. I see a lot of dishes in the sink. I see, you know, my cat walking around the apartment or the house, um, So just bringing yourself into the present moment and bringing awareness to what is around you um, really helps bring you back into the present moment. Um, Mm -hmm. Another one that I really, really love, and this can either be um, a tool to stay present or something that just gets added into kind of like your daily practice. Again, this is another one that's wonderful to do with children. I did an Instagram post about this at one point and... um, yeah, it just made me really, really happy to, to hear um, how much this helped people. But interrupt your anxiety with gratitude. We all have so much to be grateful for, even when things are hard. And we forget how lucky and grateful um, and privileged truly that we are to even have a house over our head, to be healthy, you know, to have healthy children, to just all the things, right? Um, to have a loving partner, um, you know, a career that we love, friends. Like there's just so many things that we can all be grateful for. And when we're going through those anxiety spirals, I often find that it's like we lose sight of the big picture because we are so deep in the minutia of the details that we forget about the big picture of our day-to-day lives and, you know, how grateful we truly are for our lives because all we're doing is thinking about the worry. Um, And sometimes the worries are small and kind of insignificant when we kind of come out of them. But reminding ourselves and interrupting ourselves with gratitude. So I have some clients that will keep a gratitude list in the notes section of their phone where they literally have certain things that they're very grateful for in their life. And when they're experiencing anxiety, they might consult that list and just read that list. Um, Because when they're really going through it, sometimes coming up with things that they're grateful for can be really hard. Um, I love that. Yeah, it can be really hard sometimes in the moment to be like, well, what am I grateful for? I feel like Mm -hmm. everything is, you know, (laughs) everything is going wrong and, you know, nothing is in alignment. Um, So having a list handy somewhere um, is really nice. And I would say having a gratitude practice in general um, also helps combat stress and anxiety. Um, I love to do it in the evening, but I know a lot of people enjoy having a gratitude practice in the morning. So It's just writing down five things you feel grateful for. And what's beautiful about it is you can do it in the moment. So you could say, what are five things I'm grateful for right now? So instead of being like, you know, I'm great. I mean, yes, you can absolutely say I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head or other things like that. But you could also say things like, I'm so grateful that right now I'm eating a delicious meal. I'm so grateful that I had five minutes to myself this morning. I'm so grateful that, you know, my kids have gymnastics today so I can sit and read a book or I can go home and clean the house. Like um, just having some just on a daily basis, being able to call in some gratitude into the life, I find really, really helps with anxiety. I I love that. I I have a gratitude journal and sometimes it's, I, I get away from it at times because because I feel like I don't have time. Sometimes it feels like one more chore to sure. do. So I really like that if you could just sit down and come up with things. And I'm always writing things on the notes apps, Me you know, too. on my phone. So that would be such a, a great idea to just one day sit down and bullet list mm-hmm. a whole bunch of things that you're grateful for and then just go back to read reading it because sometimes yeah even read it out loud you could even read it out loud it makes it even more powerful right right because I think sometimes I mean if we're if we're pressed to do so we can always come up with something that we're grateful for but sometimes in the midst of anxiety in the midst of chaos the what if that are spiraling in your head, you kind of just need to go back and read something and not, and just like not have to create it on your own, but just go back in and, and read that list that could be so helpful. I have something else along with that, um, that I would love to share with you guys as well. Um, 
this kind of goes back also to your comment earlier about social media um, and the comparison and all of that, but it is also related to kind of this and staying present. I have a folder on my phone um, in the photos section of my phone called Remember Who You Are. Um, mm. And this is a really sweet one too. And if you like the idea of kind of having a note section with gratitude, it's sort of a similar idea. So I will screenshot some of my favorite Instagram posts that I've done um, where I've really felt like I've made a difference um, and helped people. Mm. I will add photos of myself and loved ones um, to that folder. Um, I, will, I have a couple photos of myself as a little girl in that folder. And in those moments, and it can be different for everybody. I have um, one of my clients loves to screenshot text messages um, from friends where you know, she's really helped a friend or friends really helped her. Or they had a funny conversation and she will, you know, screenshot those. And then in those moments of feeling really stuck in the anxiety, you can go look in that folder of the remember who you are and go look in that folder and just remind yourself. Because I think sometimes when we get in that anxiety, we kind of end up being this person that we don't recognize and yeah. It, yeah. we can kind of get really down on ourselves and be like, oh my gosh, who am I right now? Like, uh, this isn't me. <laughs> this isn't me, but not sure right. how to kind of get back to me. So reminding ourselves sometimes of who we really are deep down below all the anxiety, below all the stress, like mm. who are we really can sometimes also kind of take us out of that anxiety. Beautiful. I'm starting that today. <laughs> I love that. I already have saved some, uh, yeah, kind of a, like a folder of quotes, you know, yeah, like that maybe too. I add quotes too. Pinterest, but yeah, I love that. And I think, yeah, getting back to who we are, because when our minds are in that anxious state, that's not our God given state. No. That's not the state that we thrive in and that we were meant to live in. And so getting back to who we are and just remembering that all will be well, like yes. you said, that we have faith that everything will be okay is something that um, I think is so important for each of us to remember every single day. And another one, another one real quick that you might want to add to that too, um, yeah. is also um, overcoming other obstacles. So sometimes when we're like really in it, we're like so in it and we're like, oh my gosh, things are never going to get better. So sometimes um, I also like to add into that folder, like times or challenging moments in my life that I've really overcome. Like for me, I have a photo of me getting treatment for Crohn's disease and I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I really, and of course it's not going to be that severe for everybody. Maybe it's like, a conflict with your partner that you really overcame or, you know, you never thought your kid would get potty trained and they finally did. Like <laughs> small victories too of being like, I was so in it in that moment and it felt like my entire world was crumbling, but it's just a reminder that it was just a blimp in the journey. It's not your whole world. It was just a moment. Um, so I think sometimes we need those reminders too of like, this is not the whole world. You will get out of this because you've gotten out of it before. Absolutely. Good reminder, of course. Rebecca, thank you so much. You've been such a wealth of information. I've really enjoyed talking with you today. Um, could you just tell people how they can contact you and where they can find you on social media? Absolutely. Yes, this has been so much fun. Um, yeah, so you guys can all find me at um, wisebodywellness.com, W-I-Z-E-B-O-D-Y. W E L L N E S S dot com. Um, there's an option all the way at the bottom to sign up for my newsletter. I'm also going to be um, releasing some new offerings um, this fall, which I'm really excited about. Um, some pre recorded courses and things like that that people have kind of been asking for um, that, you know, don't have the ability to kind of do some of my bigger programs. You can also find me on Instagram, same name, W I Z E B O D Y W E L L N E S S. Um, probably also searching my name. I think it's Becca Wiseman on there. Um, I'm almost done with my Instagram sabbatical. I will most likely be back. <laughs> yeah, I most likely will be back come September. It's been just really beautiful for me to kind of take the summer off to really focus on some of my programs and my other work. But I'm generally, as you know, Kim knows, I'm very active in that space. So um, if you mm -hmm. liked um, some of what I shared with you here, um, there's a lot of content that already exists on my Instagram that you might enjoy perusing. Um, and when I come back on, of course, I'll be sharing more content there as well. Thank you so much again for being here and for giving us your time today. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. That's it for today. 
For more from Kim, you can go to KimMarovich.com. For more from Lori, go to simplyempoweredllc.com. We're always open to listener questions or suggestions for the show. You can email those to contact at a whole new you podcast.com. We'd also love it if you joined our Facebook community and followed us on Instagram. Just search for a whole new you podcast. And lastly, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a rating and review in iTunes, we would really appreciate that so more people can find our show and join our community. We'll see you next week.